Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. Um, I know it's been a while since I've recorded one, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple today. It's just a quick, well, quick sketch, yes. It's, um, I tried to keep it in real time as much as I could. Um, it's basically just a sketch of like a fantasy character. And um, I thought, while this was going on, I could do a little Q and A. Um, I went on to Instagram and Tumblr and DeviantArt. Um, those would be my like three main haunts, I suppose. Um, to ask people if they had any kind of questions for me, just in relation to anything. But they all ended up being about art, which is fine. So um, I'll just answer them here as you watch me draw, and hopefully it'll be an enjoyable video. So the first question I got was what or who is your main source of inspiration at the moment? So lately I have been really, really admiring people like Lee Ellickson and um, Art With M. I've only recently discovered Art With M, just even just like a few days ago. And I'm really, really in love with how the two of them treat like their sketchbooks. Those would be kind of the most intriguing um, thing for me at the moment just because I'm like so into my sketchbooks at the moment. I find that like the way they approach their imagery like whether it's landscapes or little cartoon animals or fruit or collage or whatever like Art With M is an absolute master of collage like she's so so good she can create these incredible landscapes just with like paper which I find incredible considering that like I'm not a collager myself but the two of them um, have such like an excellent sense of color. Everything that they do just like is is so like harmonious and beautiful and like <laughs> I can't like gush about it enough. It's really like you just have to see their work to kind of understand. I think it's they ju they just do such a vibrant work and it's um and they're so kind of loose and fluid with how they approach everything and it's definitely something that I'd like to kind of include a little bit more in my own work um sometimes I can get a little bit too tight in terms of like drawing or you know trying to get too many details too early um and what I really like about their work is they're so like loose and yet it turns out so like energetic and I don't know I mean like I know it's a subjective thing to say like oh this person's art is like amazing because of whatever reason um I'm I'm obviously not assuming that everybody is going to agree with me but they, these are the people that like currently I'm admiring I love looking through their like Instagrams and yeah um they would be the two main people at the moment that I'm looking at the next question kind of ties into it where um, it is what feeds your muse and discovering new artists definitely is is one of the biggest um, pushes that I get whenever I'm feeling really like blocked in my art. It happened kind of last year as well where I hadn't really drawn in my sketchbook for a couple of months and I had then after a while I discovered Mew Tripled on on YouTube and I was watching all of her videos about like drawing in her sketchbook and stuff and it really really inspired me and I was kind of off in my sketchbooks kind of since then really. She's watching her videos kind of really made me um, stick to working on my sketchbook and now further down the line um, I'm following people like Lee Ellickson and Art With M and looking to their work for like colour inspiration or you know, even just the way they use like patterns or little doodles or like um, watching Art With M has kind of like got me in the mood to use collage in some of my work now, maybe in like my sketchbooks or whatever. You'll see at the end of this video that I actually end up cutting up a couple of pieces of paper um, that I painted on and just stuck them on at the end of the, the, the whole drawing and it just adds that finishing touch. It just looks so good I think <laughs> not to toot my own horn or anything but like it's it's just discovering new artists who have a style that like really resonates with me like always without fail inspires me and um, I could go off like for for days then 
easily just doing my own thing then and constantly referring to their work and um yeah i mean like i'm i'm sure i've no doubt i'm not the only one that that happens to it's so like invigorating to find somebody who kind of aligns with how you want your work to be and they are a really good source of um not only inspiration but like they're a source of knowledge as well like they're obviously able to achieve a certain uh mood or or whatever it is like line quality or um like i said a sense of color any of those things that like uh you yourself might want to emulate and like it's it's great to find somebody who is able to do that in a way that you really admire because like it just never fails <laughs> to light that fire that kind of like um that I don't even know what to call it the the yeah the drive the drive to to make art and that's a feeling that like obviously like anybody else I really enjoy that feeling when I have it and um I pretty much get it without fail whenever I discover um a new artist that I really like like that's not to say that those two artists are the only ones that I look at I look at plenty um, but just currently, at this moment in time, they are the two that I probably reference the most at the moment. And um, like, if you if you follow my Instagram, you'll see that like I recently did a collage in my sketchbook. Um, very very rough, like not very good, but it's um, but it means that like I feel inspired to try something that I wouldn't do normally, and I really enjoyed it. So now I'm kind of thinking of ways, like how can I include something like that in my regular work or even just in my sketchbook in general. Um, so yeah, like it's it's just been <laughs> a really kind of nice few days where I felt really like peppy and um, just kind of keen to, to just be working away in my sketchbook. And I've been painting a lot more as well generally lately as well. So. Um, I'm kind of in that zone at the moment, which is nice. Okay, so the next question I got was, talk to me about shading techniques, which is kind of a vague question. Um, I did manage to uh, clarify with the person what what exactly they meant like what kind of shading techniques and they said specifically with this drawing that I'm doing now um, so I mean like there isn't really that much to kind of explain with this there's a lot of I guess you would call it cross hatching like you can kind of see it's just a lot of little scratchy lines um, I generally prefer to outline my sketches with um, thin pigment liners. The one I'm using here is the Micron, the Sakura Micron 0.1, I think. Uh, you'll probably, if, if the camera ever focuses at any point on the end of the pen, you'll probably see the, the width. I'm pretty sure it's the 0.1. Um, but I find that it's a thin enough pen to make things like cross hatching and shading in that in that way look really kind of like fine but um it still adds that kind of depth that you need um later on in the video you'll see in the i'll kind of start filling in the background with a thicker pigment liner that that'll be a 0.8 um and that didn't work quite as well because it did well it just didn't really go the way i was kind of hoping to you'll see anyway like you'll see me kind of messing around with it. It's not for a while anyway. But um, I guess if I was to kind of go more in depth with shading techniques, it's it's kind of hard to say like, this is how you do it because it just depends on what, what medium you're using or um, what your style is as well. Cause like, uh, I was kind of talking to my boyfriend yesterday about how I was gonna answer this question because there are so many different ways to do it. And I was kind of trying to plan it out a little bit in my head beforehand, um, just so that I kind of knew what to say. And it's hard to know what to say because 
as far as I'm concerned with my art, um, I, especially when I'm just sketching like this, I just kind of tend to do that scratchy cross hatching. That does it for me. Um, I quite actually enjoy doing it in my paintings as well. Like once I've finished the actual painting, I'll use coloring pencils or, or regular pencils, it doesn't really matter, um, to just kind of scratch color back into um, the picture. Or if the paint is still wet, sometimes it's nice to actually use a coloring pencil to kind of gouge back into the paint. So you get the color from the pencil um, marking underneath, but it's also taking away the paint at the same time. So it's kind of leaving these scratchy textures in it. And that can look really nice. I know it's not technically a shading technique, but um, I was also saying that like, I know there's this like, I wouldn't even say it's a hard and fast rule because it just depends on the person. There's a general rule, I guess, that you would hear fairly often where you absolutely never, never, never shade with black, um, which is true to an extent. Like obviously if you're doing something kind of like a graphic novel or it just, if, you, if it's just your style, some people shade with black, like really harsh black shadows and it can look really cool. I suppose it really um, applies only to like if you're if you're doing things in like a fine art approach, um, landscape or portraits or whatever. I mean, again, like I was saying, it, it's not a hard and fast rule. It's a, just a general rule because, I mean, like if you if you go outside or or whatever, um, and you look at the shadows, you'll you'll see that there isn't there's no black in them. Um, there will be parts that look black, but you, you know, if you look closely, like it'll, you'll, you'll, you'll realize that it's just, it's just not black. There's always things like reflected light, even kind of like in the depths of, you know, um, like in the depths of like a hedge or in some woods or something, things that look black aren't necessarily black. So yeah, I mean like I don't really know how else to answer this question. It's just a case of like figuring out how you want to um, use colors in your art. I know I'm being like really vague, but I'm, I'm being vague on purpose because I don't want to say this is how you should do it. This is how you should approach shadows in, in your artwork or these are the only techniques that are like actually viable in art. Um, I don't want to say any of that because like that isn't the case. Um, so yeah, okay, I'll, I'll maybe I'll just leave it at that because like when it comes to the sketch I'm doing now, all I'm doing is that kind of, like I call it cross hatching. It's not even really cross hatching because it's a, a lot of just parallel lines. So that's it. Um, in a sketchbook, I suppose you just have to keep it loose and light more maybe than I'm doing because like I was saying earlier I do have a tendency to kind of get really like tight with my details too early you know so and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't I'm actually really happy with how this drawing goes uh, at like by the end when it's finished I'm really happy with it but there were several moments kind of during the um process of it that I was kind of a bit like you know humming and hawing if I was going in the right direction but I kind of, <laughs> I hope that answers the question to some extent. I know the entire thing was very jumbled and vague, but like um, to just talk about shading techniques is just too broad and vague. Um, but I hope I answered it in like, uh, with like in regards to this drawing enough. I hope so. Let's see. The next question. What brushes do you use? So, um, this is also an interesting question because it could depend on whether I'm working digitally or traditionally. So I'm gonna guess that you mean digitally because that question generally only comes up for like digital work. So, um, well, I don't know, I'll answer both anyway. So when I'm working digitally, I, pretty much only work on Procreate now. And um, there's a brush 
in the sketching tab um, that's the uh, the 6B pencil that's the one I use like all the time for sketching or even for finish work I'll often use it um, especially you know if you if you do the little nifty gimmick of like you know turning your 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 pen on its side and then kind of like you know like you're as if you're shading with an actual pencil like I really really love how that effect works in Procreate so I think that looks very well and I use a 6B brush all the time. When it comes to colouring, I'll often use the studio pen in the inking tab and those would be the two main ones that I use. Um, back when I used to work on Photoshop, I remember that there was a brush called like an oil, it was like an oil brush, I think. I think like when you're in the regular list of basic brushes. It's right at the bottom. It's a kind of a squarish brush. So when you're using it, it has like a really nice um, thick and thin quality to it. Um, I used to use that one a lot. There isn't really anything quite like it on Procreate. Like I've tried out a few brushes and some kind of come close, but nothing quite like that. Um, but I don't really use Photoshop now anymore either to draw mainly because uh, my tablet is broken, so I can't even use it. <laughs> but um, that's what I would have used before when I used Photoshop. So for anybody who uses Photoshop, that was my favorite brush. And yeah, so Procreate would be the 6B pencil and the studio pen. And then I pretty much kind of experiment and mess around with other ones. Um, I like a lot of the painting brushes for like textures. And um, there's one called the Nico Roll or Nico Roll. I'm not really sure how you'd say it, but it has a really, really nice texture. It's like this really blocky uh, rectangular brush. And it has just this lovely texture that like, I'll use sometimes for, um, for shading actually, or um, borders, it can be nice. Um, yeah, that's another one that kind of like, you know, that I can think of, think of off the top of my head. Then when it comes to traditional brushes, I really like using flat brushes, actually, flat tipped brushes. Um, I used to exclusively use round brushes before, and I still do use them, but really the, the small little detail ones are kind of my preferred ones now. If I'm kind of painting like a landscape or um, anything like that, uh, the flat brushes would kind of be my, my usual go-to. They would be the first ones that I reach for. Um, I don't really have anything like too enormous. I never paint that large. So, hold on. Like, I have one here. It's um, just kind of like, if I'm able to, I might add in a couple of photos um, of the actual brushes that I use. Like, you mustn't mind the uh, frayed the frayed nature of them because they're all just very used but like you know like a half inch flat brush or um yeah <laughs> it's not as exciting as the digital brushes because there's not as much of a variety but um flat brushes they'd be my usual sometimes the the little kind of crappy frayed brushes um that you think aren't any good anymore are, are sometimes can still be used for like uh, textures and stuff in painting. So I, I'd say keep them if they're not like completely hard and dry. The next question is, how do you go about choosing colors or shapes for the final design? Is it a matter of thumbnailing or imagining the pieces you work on it? So if I'm talking specifically about this drawing, um, like you saw, it was just kind of drawing off the cuff. Um, I had a very vague idea of what I wanted to do because uh, I had kind of drawn this character um, a couple of pages before this, not in this pose, but it was more kind of like I drew her, didn't really like how she came out, so I decided to draw her again and I didn't really have anything like a pose in mind or anything, so this is just kind of, I just knew that I wanted it to be kind of like a flowy, flying kind of pose that's kind of it that's that's really how it came about 
like you I mean like you've seen the the process of it it's just very simple I'm kind of just going with what I feel like um there isn't really anything too planned out about it like when it comes to my actual proper paintings it's kind of the same like I'll have a reference picture maybe that I can that I'll have like a more solid idea of what I, I'm trying to do um but but even then like I'm not too strict with myself in terms of like if it's exactly like the photo as long as it kind of captures the mood of it I'm, I'm kind of talking I suppose more about relation to like landscapes and stuff because um, if I'm doing a portrait then I obviously will do my best to keep it as um, like the person as resemblant is that a word to resemble the person as much as possible because obviously that's the point of a portrait um, so I am a bit stricter with myself for something like that, but I won't thumbnail. I won't, um, I won't generally choose colors in advance. Sometimes if I'm really, really stuck, I'll, um, like if I'm in the middle of painting a portrait and I can't decide what color to put in the background or what color I should make their clothes, then sometimes I'll take a photo of it and bring it into Procreate and just kind of fiddle around with colors on that. But that's rare enough. Like usually I'll have like, um, a good reference of um, the clothes that the person actually wears so I'll generally just do that when it comes to the landscape sometimes I will um, bring a photo into Photoshop and maybe saturate the colors a little bit more so that they're more like how I want them to be recently I've been doing some like woodland um, paintings as well and those those I actually did put a filter on in Photoshop to kind of flatten all of the colors. I used the um, the cutout filter. I can't uh, I can't remember what tab it's in. Is it like in the artistic one or something? If you go to like um, filters and artistic, I think there's like a cutout option, and you can mess around with how many layers you want or how. Damn it! What's the word? how accurate the edges are to whatever point in the photo so I was messing around with that all right and um, it just helped me kind of simplify the shapes a little bit and understand the the layering of the photo that I was trying to do so that was that's that was a thing that's something I did um it does make it easier I mean like and people have all kinds of ways to approach something um lots of people do thumbnail like that's the thing every planning process is valid I guess to the to the person who's using it um again when I'm going um when I'm talking about like Lee Ellickson or Art With M they don't seem to sketch that much beforehand they don't do many um preparatory sketches sometimes they do but usually they'll just kind of like as far as I can tell from the videos that I've watched they kind of just like go straight into what they're doing uh, especially Lee and that's something that I really admired that kind of looseness and the kind of the bravery to just pick out your colors and then just blob them down and it just you know she everything she does is really like nice I'm I'm a big fan <laughs> um so those were all of the questions I think so I hope though I hope some of those answers were Okay, I know I, I tend to ramble a lot and um, talk about things that aren't necessarily re relevant to the question or I'll go off on tangents and stuff, but I hope there was some uh, good information in there. That's one of the biggest problems I have with, um, I don't have a problem talking about art, but sometimes if people ask me art questions, I do have a hard time answering because it's such a personal thing. Um, like no one has there's no like one way to approach anything and there are so many different types of art so many different forms of it that you have to just develop your own way to make it like easy for yourself and my ba my basic way of kind of just like approaching things is like plan it out if I'm really stuck but otherwise just kind of like trust myself like I I need to trust that I know what I'm doing and that like you know I know 
I have the ability to do it. So I should just do it and not worry too much about like whether the preparatory sketch is perfect or if the the colors I'm mixing are like spot on. Like there are some artists who can look at a color and can mix it like to perfection and that's great for them. And I wish I could do that. Um, I'm more careful, again, if it comes to portraiture, but then I don't have like an extremely detailed um, fine art style for my portraits either anyway. And landscapes, I feel like it's, you know, I have the freedom to kind of do what I want really. So I do find it very kind of like hard to say like, this is, this is some advice that I can give because it, like art is just so broad and it can be so vague. And um, so I don't, I don't know if any of what I said <laughs> is, has been of any help, but like, thank you for as asking the questions. Um, if anyone in the future would like to ask me questions, I'm usually quite active on my Instagram. Um, I'm always happy to answer stuff, even if I do like stumble over my words a lot. Um, I do like answering stuff and it doesn't always have to be about art either. So for, if for once I'm going to actually talk about the drawing, this is, um, this is where I was using the uh, larger pigment liner like, that I mentioned earlier. I thought I could use that kind of scribbling, filling technique um, um, that I do use a, a little bit. But for some reason here, it just wasn't really working. Um, it wasn't wasn't coming out the way I had imagined. I like I was putting it down so that she would kind of stand out from the page a bit more. I really liked the drawing, but I wanted to kind of like push it a little bit further in terms of like helping her come out from the page more. And I was kind of scared to do anything else because I didn't want to to ruin the whole thing. Um. And as I was doing this, I was thinking, I'm ruining it now. It looks messy and it looks really bad and it's not even helping her pop out from the page. So I was struggling a bit, um, you know, trying to clean up the edges and yeah. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't, um, wasn't the part that I was the happiest with and I was really, really scared that I was ruining it. I kept going because I was like, well, I've started it now. I can't just stop right as I've started because that definitely would look weird. I think it worked out pretty well. I, once I have finished, uh, sorry, once I had finished all of the, uh, the black fill in, you can kind of see that I'm like tapping my pen and being like, what am I doing? Um, I decided then to kind of fill it in a bit more with like a darker, like an ink wash. So I put some blue behind it and that really, really helped. So it kind of helped to fill in the gaps in between like the, the pen that I hadn't filled in. Um, but then it, um, uh, sorry, it kind of helps the texture of it as well. And uh, because she's all like greens and yellows and stuff, she really like pops out of it a little bit more. And then um, later on, you don't actually see me doing it because um, I only thought about doing it after I'd stopped filming, but I um, cut out some little star shapes from like some painted paper, all inspired by art with M, of course. And um, that was kind of, I think the, the thing that it needed was just this little extra element that like helped it all kind of pop a little bit and bring things together. Um, so you'll see that at the end in the kind of the, the finished shot of the image, I guess. So yeah, that's kind of it. Um, I'm sorry again if I was rambling a lot or if I was just too vague with some of my answers, but I hope you still enjoyed the video. I'm gonna leave it here. Um, I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of the video in silence or however you want and um, I'll talk to you in the next video and thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah, bye.